So this is Carl George. He's our sacrificial attendee. This is his uh, his first official CentOS thing. We didn't actually show him any of these slides ahead of time. He has no idea what he's doing up here. So I'm not kidding. This is legitimately sacrificial for him. Welcome, Carl. <laughs> Someone in this room might. Does everyone know who he is? No. I'm not, I'm not taking a seat. Uh, so my name is Jim Perrin. I mostly try to stay out of the, uh, the public side of things. Um, I tend to prefer to let Fabian, Brian, Vipple handle all of the day-to-day uh, the -day interaction type stuff, mostly because I, as a manager within Red Hat and as part of the CentOS project, I find myself in more meetings than anything else. I'm not saying I make great decisions, but I have Fabian and Brian be able to back me up on this one, as Carl as well. So, Brian, would you like to introduce yourself as your new role? Certainly. So I'm Brian Exelbeer. Oh, these are the other colleagues. Um, and so along those lines, uh, one thing we wanted to make clear, we're all wearing a lot of hats up here, which is funny because we work for a hat company. Um, all three of us do have the privilege of working for Red Hat, but we're going to be talking to you as both employees about what Red Hat thinks and as community members about what we maybe think and the conversations we'd like to have with you. Um, I don't think I know many of you, but you may know of me if you've ever been to a CentOS project meeting because I help put in the infrastructure that provides that iCalendar feed and that web page. And I know every one of you goes to a meeting every week and thinks of me. Um, <laughs> But also, as a little bit of background, because I'm going to be wearing the most reddest of hat through this, uh, I had the privilege of doing the job that Rich does for the Fedora community for about three years. Um, and I know how hard you work, and I know how hard this is, and getting all these people in the room is not easy, so thank you. Um, that was an awesome <laughs> So we're here today to talk to you about CentOS Stream. And one of the first questions that I think everyone in this room is asking is, why are these slides so ugly? Um, and the answer is, they are ugly because we stared at a blank piece of paper and went, that's the theme. Um, the real reason that they're ugly is we are actually using basically the exact same deck that we used when two of us, unfortunately Carl was not there, his role was played by a man named Ben Cotton, uh, we gave this talk to the REL engineering teams at their leadership meeting. And we have brought almost 100% of those slides here. Uh, we changed a few words where it was some weird, wacky, red hat uses a word incorrectly term, so we were going to use like the human version of that word. Um, and we took some stuff off that, you know, we like our jobs and that was confidential. But uh, at the end of the day, we're trying to give the same presentation. This is an open, transparent conversation, and so we didn't put anybody's branding on these slides. Also, we didn't get a graphic designer, so in a little bit you're going to see what engineers do when you meet charts. <laughs> we apologize for that greatly. You don't even need to say that is your fake question as like you need a graphic designer, we know. So CentOS Stream is what Red Hat intends to put into the next realm. The next rel in this case, or in the future rel, in this case, is defined as the next minor release. So we're not talking about major releases, just to be very clear, and I'll, I'll say this once again later. If you're thinking about major releases, like whatever number comes after 9, which I have not been informed of what that number is yet, um, you need to go talk to our friends in our sister organization, Sister Community Fedora, because that's where we do that kind of work. Um, but when you're talking about the things that come later after 8 dot whatever, we're thinking about CentOS Stream. Mm -hmm. have a, next, please, Ben. So how does code flow? So a lot of us have been told this story about how Enterprise Linux as a code community set works. That there's things in upstream, and they flow into Fedora, and then you know, the middle boxes up all over. They flow into RHEL, and then they flow onward downstream to layer projects and other fun things. That's not true. Like, we know it's not true. It's never been completely true. We can all talk about kernels that come inside doors. We can all talk about weird rebases that happen. We can talk about things that come upward stream, like salmon and the, you know, what is it, the winter that they go up? I don't know. But like, it's never completely been true. So part of CentOS Stream's goal is, we'd like this picture to finally be true. We would really like you to be able to watch code flow from an upstream through Fedora to CentOS Stream into RHEL and then onward into all of the things that 
And if we can get that, we've already made like a huge win in clarity and, and comprehension. Um, so this slide and the slides that follow are all very wordy. And the reason for that, because I want to give you context and make you think I'm not just a terrible presenter. The reason for that is that there's this giant, and I'm not kidding, 103 page document that spells out Red Hat's operating system strategy, which is confidential, so I unfortunately cannot force you all to read it. Um, but I have to write a section of that called the upstream vision. Because I didn't tell you what I do. You didn't tell them that I didn't tell you what I do. Um, I work for Red Hat in the open source program office, and I have been sent to help our REL business unit understand upstream and to help our REL business unit understand a vision around upstream that is compatible with what our communities want to do. So that's my whole job. So I'm spelling out a vision so that they can understand the journey that we're going to go on. And then I'm coming here to share this vision with you, not because it's going to be shocking, but because it'll help make sense when Red Hat says, hey, we want to do a thing. This is what they were thinking. So I apologize for the introduction. So these slides are wordy because I'm writing things for people who maybe never thought about these concepts. So the first vision point that I want them to get is, we should have a single ecosystem. We should not be thinking about things like Fedora, CentOS, and RHEL as separate things existing in separate spaces. We are all in the same plane of existence. In an ideal world, we don't overlap a lot. I do want to call one thing out, and I will step closer to the mic for this one. Um, it is important to remember that Red Hat is a giant company, and so, the engine, you, you cannot consider engineers in the same context as some of the business people. When, when Ben is, or when, I'm sorry, when Brian is explaining uh, the upstream vision to this, he's typically talking to the people with MBAs, the business folks, the bean counters, the engineers, they, they get the open source concept. They're used to it. But explaining it to somebody with a business degree is slightly more challenging than talking to a software engineer. He gets to play translator to explain how that works. And also, words are like stupid hard, and I'll bring that up again later as well. When I'm saying that our communities shouldn't overlap, I don't mean you. You should be in as many of these communities as you want, or as few of these communities as you want. I mean like goals and objectives. If, if two or three of us are all trying to accomplish the same thing, we're going to wind up in some form of conflict. So let's talk about that. Let's make sure that when we overlap, we do so deliberately, not accidentally. Because accidental overlap is where we get a lot of tension. Deliberate overlap, we're strategizing. And it's, it's strategizing, yeah. But it's like, that's a great NBA word. Um, but the point is that it, it's like way more palatable and it doesn't keep me up at night. And I hope it won't keep anybody else up at night as well. So one ecosystem, think about everything. Keep it simple. I don't ever want to have to give a talk of this length again to explain how things are going to work. Like, it should just be obvious. Where do I go to use, contribute, participate, whatever? I should be able to make those choices very easily. And that goes back to part of that. When we think about these overlaps deliberately, we don't create confusion. Because we've all been in that situation where you're like, uh, should I use Angular or React? I don't know. In six months, what bad decision will I have made that I've locked myself in? <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'll just go write Perl code because that's, of course, the right answer. Um, we don't want that for our ecosystem either. Um, and then this second paragraph is very much a red hat statement. But it's how the business thinks. From any place in this ecosystem, we want people to be able to see a way to support a product because that's how we pay for our reasons. And this is not a destroy the communities play at all, but it is a, that ecosystem is a simple concept play. Which gets to, how do we not destroy the communities? Um, we believe that differentiation occurs on life cycle and cadence. <coughs> Fedora, six month cadence. CentOS, longer. Life cycles, they're very different. RHEL differentiates not on bits, but on the value of subscription. Um, stop me at the hall and quiz me on the eight reasons that there's a great value of subscription in RHEL if you want, and then call my boss and tell him that I passed. <laughs> but the point here is that, you know, we don't put bad things into code bases to cause problems. None of this is an idea around, so let's go change that one to a zero and then CentOS won't boot anymore. Like, that is wrong. And we are making sure everyone in all places knows that is wrong. That is not how open source works. 
free the community. This one is a little controversial, but it's obvious to all of us in this room. Like, Red Hat is participating in all of these communities and doing its best. Sometimes it's great, sometimes we slip up to be an equal community participant with everybody else. So Red Hat is going to direct its investments in the areas that make sense for it. And this, I'm thinking specifically here about like features and bug fixes. I'm not talking about like keeping the lights on. Um, that's a completely different part of Red Hat doing different investments. Um, but we also don't want to block the boss. So if the community has an idea that they want to pursue, you know, if you've got an idea, you want to spin up a CentOS SIG, you want to go form a Fedora lab or spin, like knock yourselves out. Um, my, my brain joke when I was in Fedora was, if you want Linux for llama herders, that's great. Red Hat's not really in that market, but there's no reason you can't have it. So let's make sure that there's an explicit statement of freedom there, because we don't want anybody to think that there's rules that are exploited. I told you this presentation was given two days ago. Um, we gave it in Brno, Czech Republic, the beautiful city in which I live. Everything is better in Brno. And so you're getting even the bad joke that was in the slides. This warning came up because uh, two of the three of us who gave this talk are not distribution builders. And none of the three of us who gave this talk had ever worked for Rel Engineering. And no one on this stage either has worked for Rel Engineering, but um, unfortunately the non-distro builder is now in the minority. Um, so please, as we talk forward, be gentle, <clears throat> assume good intent. If I say one of your favorite trigger words, don't go, aha, glibc, da 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 because that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the general theories. We're talking about the 80% cases. Like, inside of Red Hat, for example, the bad words are alpha and beta. Oh my god, do they have meaning? <laughs> like, don't use those words, because you trigger, like, half the audience. So, like, please be gentle. Um, and, no, go back. I'm explaining Shalina's baby. <laughs> I was trying to keep So, warning. Um, in Brno, we we're privileged to have a tram system, and in Czech, that is a tramvai. Uh, but in Brno, we use a local language called Hantex just for this word mostly, and it's Shalina, and this upsets all the Czech people in software. Today. So, Pozor's warning. Please go ahead. So, again, remember you're seeing business oriented slides because we think that that's the best way to be open and transparent about what we're trying to think about here in the context of the vision that we laid out. Um, I do stop talking at some point in this conversation. Uh, so CentOS Stream is what RHEL intends to see, or what Red Hat intends to see in the next RHEL minor release. Features, breaking changes, big, big rocks you should look to see in Fedora as they make their way to the next RHEL major release. We feel like that's a very clean, clean statement here. Um, just like with CentOS Linux, I think you all, I don't know, there's weird words in this community around ZStream and maintenance release and other things, but yeah, CDs and stuff show up like sometimes. <laughs> Embargo code, like we can't give it to you yet. So that stuff still holds true here. Um, there's still no metadata in there. So like Red Hat's official answer to, is this CVE fixed, is eh, go look at the code. Because um, that's part of our value of subscription. Um, but you all know where to look, so we're at. Um, and then, since I'll stream, this caveat was really to drive home the point to our engineering teams, but I also want you to feel reassured by it. It is what we intend to put in the next minor release of RHEL. There will always be some edge case that comes up where like feature X lands, we're going through stabilization, it develops a defect, it cannot ship. Red Hat has publicly announced that we're doing mostly time-based releases. We have to pull that feature and let it slip over us. That should be the only time there is a surprise if you've been watching CentOS Stream and then you look at RHEL. That should be the exception, not the rule. And remember, we said there's no work in progress code in the mainstream, so or in the in stream itself, in consumable. So there should be no surprises here. We're trying to let it be very open. We want a contribution model. Um, we are an enterprise software development company with an open source development model. That didn't come out completely right, but hopefully Paul Cormier won't watch this video. Um, but the point is, contributions is what makes open source community strong. Your contributions matter, our contributions matter. We want to make sure contributions can happen. 
one of the challenges that I understand that the CentOS community has had in the past is it's been hard to make that contribution. So let's fix that. Contributions are going to be open to anyone. But because this is what we intend to see at the next minor release of RHEL, our RHEL engineers will be the committers. What this means is you may show up, or anyone may show up, including certain Red Hat engineers, with a technically complete, competent, extraordinarily interesting commit that is not something that is appropriate for the RHEL use cases, and we will go, would you like a job? But we're not going to take your back. And in some cases, somebody will show up with a less than complete, technically meritable patch, but we'll go, oh, oh, wow, that, that's important, and we will ask someone to please fix it and get it in. And this is not a reflection on the contributor at all. It's a reflection on that statement of the next minor release of RHEL. Now, interesting side thing that we're still trying to figure out, and, you know, we need to talk to the CentOS board and figure out what we want to do here, I would like to see that highly technically competent patch that fixes something that just doesn't happen to be interesting to the next rel become a CentOS stream city. Because it's clearly important to someone. Let's see if that community of people is there. Let's see if there's interest. I'll say this out loud here. Let's also see if, for example, the idea that you think is amazing that some rel engineering team went, yeah, we're not sure. Run into the SIP for a couple years. Show us we're wrong. Like, we're not going to stop listening. What's, what's the famous saying? No is temporary. And the caveat to that is, and here's why we're going to reject some of these patches, unfortunately, is that yes is forever. When we accept a patch into RHEL, we're basically marrying. It's like buying luggage. You own it forever. <laughs> you have to document it. You've got to maintain it. You've got to send it to college in America. That's expensive. That's why I live in Europe and have a daughter here. <laughs> but the point is that, like, you know, we're, we're in love with this code now. And that SST is the team that is going to have to do this work. And just like no one in this room is obligated to do work for Red Hat, the other side's kind of true, too. So we want to be able to have an honest conversation around. I want to add one specific thing around this. One of the fundamental goals as we were building out the idea for this contribution model was feedback. Mm -hmm. How many of you have filed a ticket against RHEL or something like that in Bugzilla and heard nothing? That is exactly what we are trying to stop. If you show up to the contribution model, you will get an answer. That, that is his job. I, I told you he was up here to be sacrificial. We hired him for the explicit reason of communicating and carrying the message back and forth between the engineers. He is there to facilitate people talking to each other. So you will get an answer. That answer may be no, but you will get an answer. One of the slides that we cut was our, and I hate this word, asks as a noun, but our asks to the engineering leadership. And we have the full support of them that they understand. You must be prepared and figure out a plan. We'll help you. But you have to be prepared to talk to community members when they show up with ideas. Now, this doesn't mean they're ready to look at a thousand man page typo PRs. Like, I understand the desire to go, aha, you said a submission system. Here's a typo fix. Let's see what you do. Like, okay, that, that's a lot of effort. Like, think about the resources that get spun up about fixing a man page. Um, unless you're studying for your RHC, you can probably work around that typo. There are a few commands that need examples, hint, hint. But, um, you know, the point is, like, test us with real things and you'll get real answers. But they have been told, they have been asked, and they have been offered resources to be successful in this regard. So I want to just reiterate that because mm -hmm. feedback is critical. The streams will one day cross. Uh, hopefully all of you are old <laughs> enough to get this reference. Um, <laughs> Here, listen some of these movies are going on 20 years old now. It's kind of scary. 30? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> see, I like to get up in the morning and believe that I hair dyed this. <laughs> so, um, the general idea behind CentOS Stream is, and I'm sure you've heard this before, Rich has done some wonderful work around this, uh, sending out this message. There's only one. It is eight. It keeps going. It doesn't even technically have a number. It only has a number because of things that Jim goes on for about two hours telling me about build systems. 
Um, one day, there will be nine for build system E reasons. The idea here is, and we are still working out all of the particulars of the final proposals and we want to hear what you have to say, but the idea is that one day, you will be, there will be an announcement and we'll be like, hey, we're working on the new one over here and this one's going to keep going for a little while. And then we're going to be like, hey, the new one's looking pretty finished. Coincidentally, you might see 9.0 somewhere. And then we're going to go like, we're going to stop doing this one. We're only going to have the new one. And there will be a, a ramp down period that's available to you. And then you can make the choices or we can make the choices that we want with our different machines. Maybe that's going to Rel8 because we like Brian's daughter feeding. Or maybe that's going to something else. Whatever that is, that could be moving to the next version of stream. That has to be, remember I said there's always going to be a path to paid support? There also always has to be a path around the whole ecosystem. Like that's the part I'm sneaking in on the BU. So we need to make sure that that's clean. But there will be just this brief period and then they cross. We don't know how long brief is, by the way. I say brief because it's not 10 years. That's all I know. Um, we're thinking a year or so. Can I ask if we can hold questions till the end just because that works so well with the Rel Engineering team and you guys are even better at questions, so. Next slide. And then this slide is telling us about the fact that we're seriously committed to stream. This is mostly talking to Red Hatters, but we expect layered projects to be able to build on this thing and be thinking about the next Rel. This is important to Red Hat the business because we are a portfolio company. We would like to ship all of our products at once. Nobody wants to see a rail ship and then wait six months for their storage piece to show up. So how do you do that? Please test on the next rail. Hint, CentOS straight. Um, but the other thing that we think is a huge advantage is we think this is going to speed up the availability of Apple. If you pronounce it Eiffel, it will still be late. But if you pronounce it Apple, we think <laughs> it will come faster and that that will be easier to use. So this is where I stop talking. <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry. I like breaking things. And this is as a manager where I take credit for the work that Brian, Bibble, Pablo, and others on the team do. Uh, for the MVP, we're building this out of the eight code. This is our ramp up period. We are catching up to the internal realm development. We've got to speed some of this up. So the upstreams, we've already done that. We being Red Hat, we've branched from the upstreams. We've passed Fedora. Fedora has already been cut for the distribution that is RHEL now. We are now in the bespoke stream build process. We're working with the individual subsystem teams, the people who are all going, me, 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 my package, my package. You may have seen Network Manager land in the last couple of days. They were one of the folks asking to be first. Not everybody gets to be first, but we're trying to prioritize where people land in that process. Um, as we catch up to RHEL, we are already trying to begin working on the contribution process back and forth. So right now, in Carl's other other role, he is also working that communication and hand carrying various things. At some point, we will have completely caught up and then pulled slightly ahead of RHEL with CentOS Street. So at some point, we'll have everything caught up and all the tooling will be there. And God willing, it'll work and I can stop being yelled at by the business unit. That would be fantastic. Thank you for taking most of that deflection. So the timeline for a lot of this, and keep in mind, uh, End of calendar year 2020 is kind of vague. Uh, the thing that I haven't pointed out to any of the business unit folks is I didn't mention if these are the last two digits or the first two digits. <laughs> so, <laughs> let me edit that. <laughs> I, I had to work a little bit of wiggle in there. I'm an engineer. I got to plan time appropriately. Uh, by summit, when we is summit? Hmm? When is summit? That's a damn good question. I don't have the dates memorized. April, late April. April. Late April. All right. And this, again, it's a business-oriented slide. We talk to our business teams. Like, they know what this is. They live and breathe it. So late April. Uh, we expect to have the automated composers done. We will be cycling through those as packages land, maybe daily, maybe weekly. We have to figure that out. But the automation will be there for what that looks like. 
Um, we expect to have a significant number. Here we say differentiated because that's the, the word that the business folks understand. But that basically means stuff that's in the uh, iteration of RHEL that has not GA'd yet. So if we're talking in the context of 8.1, this is the 8.2 development code. They want to see that stuff. Um, approved contributor guidelines. Carl, in his other, other, other role, is working the contributor documentation about what sorts of things we expect to see. Um, it's all of the typical stuff you would expect. It's basically, the code has to be upstream. If a feature needs to be backported, that needs to be there. We're not accepting proprietary code. It's, it's the typical stuff you would expect. There shouldn't be any real surprises. Um, and a functional uh, proof of concept around the contribution model. We actually want to be able to see code walk through from start to finish how somebody might contribute. A proof of concept. I expect there might be some rough edges on it. We're going to have to polish it up. We're looking for a couple of volunteers to kind of help us go first with the understanding it may be painful a time or two until we have everything done. By the end of calendar year 20, mobile, uh, we expect that all the eligible packages will be available in the stream and that we have lots of people using this. And we, we say flagship, again, this was shown to business folks too. They, they want to see people who are willing to get up on stage at some event and say, we contributed rel code via stream. That, that is a goal for them. So that's one of the things that they're looking at. Uh, if you're seeing something that looks suspiciously like a, a link in there, yes it is, no you can't see it, but we felt it was important to leave this in here. That is uh, Red Hat market problem business jargon. We've got a JIRA ticket in there, yes we use JIRA, that describes exactly what we want to see for the contribution model. We felt it was important to leave that in here because we want to show that Red Hat is absolutely serious about this. They want community contribution. Uh, this is also one of the slides that was slightly different, largely because internal communication within the company and external communication outside the company happen in different mediums. You're not going to be able to log into our internal JIRA instance and drop tickets in here. So we scrub JIRA out because there's no point in showing it. Um, the mailing list is one of the better ways to get in contact with us. IRC is a good way to get in contact with us. CentOS stream bugs will be in Bugzilla. Right now, Red Hat does a lot of its rel development via Bugzilla tickets. This is how we're handling that via the, the link. Some of this plumbing still has to be put into place, but you should, as of now, be able to see CentOS stream as a dropdown in the, the uh, listing on bugzilla.redhat.com and everything should be available there. It's in there. Uh, the backend mapping is what we have to work out. So it's publicly visible, you can do stuff. We're just not sure how that routes internally yet. Uh, and I think, I think this is the last slide? Or close to the last slide? Basically, this is the plug for, it's It's available now. There's, uh, I want to say, about a dozen packages that are different, and that will continuously increase. Um, a DNF update, a YUM update, however you choose to run it, will keep you current for stream. So if you want to go download it today, go get it, go try it. Um, it should be the same thing you know and love on a slightly quicker cadence. All right, I guess that was close to the last slide. Thank you. Fifteen minutes. All right. Who's got questions? There was one in the back, but uh, I shut down. Uh, I was mainly thinking about the moment you cut from eight stream to nine stream. There's always the complicated uh, part of there is no upgrade from one version, major version to the next. How does that apply to stream? <laughs> a lot of us want to answer, but we're working on that, and I think you're going to be really excited, and um, there's actually projects and programs around that. Can we restate the question? Oh, the question was, um, when you cut from one version to another in stream, there's not traditionally been a great upgrade path. 
Um, Steph Walter is coming up here to probably give us the extraordinarily long form of we have teams working on programs to actually move you from version to version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, upgrades have always been a very sore point for Ralph and for CentOS, for one major version to another. And we are, we, we have team working on this explicitly because it's not just a problem for screen. It's not just a problem for CentOS as it was, you know, CentOS Linux. It's a problem for a battle, and that makes me very sad. So, uh, my teams are working very hard on this. <laughs> and so, by the time we get there, if we haven't fixed this, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be up a stream, you know. Yeah. <laughs> don't go that way. Yes, just to follow on, is that the, the lead project? Say again? Is that the lead project? Yes. yes. The question was, is that something maybe called leap? And the answer is yes. There was a hand in the back. Yeah, question. Uh, the name is Sensors Stream, but could be another name. Uh, um, I mean, uh, we have also the CR repo for CentOS. Mm -hmm. So, may I understand that the CR repo in CentOS is just a community version in CentOS, as, as a version, and then Sensors Stream is just a name, because the gap between Fedora is really high compared to, to Rel. So, no. Um, the question. The the, the question is, isn't this just the continuous release repository that you've known in CentOS Linux for a while now? And the answer is no. Um, the continuous release repository was there as a way to bridge the time between when we had built the updates and the time we actually shipped the install media. Because it takes us a long time to go through the ISO validation to make sure that it works on all the machines, to make sure to handle CREFI correctly. There's a lot of testing and checking in that. Meanwhile, we've got people pinging us on a fairly daily basis saying, hey, that code that just dropped fixed several CVEs. What the hell? When can I have my patches? So the continuous release repository is always released code. That applies to uh, CentOS Linux. CentOS Stream is development code that uh, we, we have said no work in progress, but that is not code that Red Hat has shipped GA. That is not publicly available code. You are watching Red Hat make this sausage. That is how we're doing development internally. Um, one of the things that I have said fairly uh, regularly in the business thing that kind of gets me in trouble is our model for development has not been open source. We keep it kind of closed until we drop the code on the outside. This is a way of us being transparent and doing that open development. So there is a difference between stream and the continuous release repository. One is early access to released code. This is development code. You're watching us build the next rep. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Others. We we have another ten minutes. Come on, hit us hit us with more. Sir, there there is no security support for CentOS three because projects like Overt will recommend that you use CentOS three so they can use features fast. But there is no security support for CentOS three. That is correct for a variety of reasons. Um, the biggest being most CVE code that comes out. There's an embargo process around that. Uh, lots of people don't want to expose uh, mass computers on the internet to vulnerabilities. They want to talk about it, they want to fix it, and they want to expose it. Uh, we're not going to jeopardize that process. All of this is publicly available code. So if that embargo, if, if we did the development publicly, you would see that embargoed code early, we would break the embargo, and we would stop being given access to that early code. So we have to keep some of that back. Um, the other piece is essentially a discussion between business and community with, we've never tested CVE closure in CentOS. Like, we just don't have the hardware to validate that. We trust that that's done in the code. That's true in CentOS Linux now. We don't ship any of that CVE metadata saying, yes, we fixed the thing. We don't validate it. We just build the code and trust that Red Hat validated and hopefully that's good enough. And that is true in Stream also. As those fixes are public, as those fixes are released, then they're incorporated in the stream. So you will get that code. It's just not going to happen early. For example, the kernel, the, the stable, and the non stream, mm -hmm. we'll have an older kernel version, and at some, at some point, Red Hat will issue security fixes for that kernel, but the stream kernel will be 
a later version will it immediately also get the penalty with those incorporated things? So keep in mind the way that the development process happens. Um, there is, at any given time, and I'm, I'm going, in the case of the kernel, I'm going to drastically undersell the effort that they do because that is a massive team with a giant workflow. Um, there are, I'll say half a dozen different kernel branches internally, and I know that that is significantly a low count. Um, you'll have a, a development <coughs> branch for the next major release. You'll have a development branch for the next minor release, and then you have the maintenance releases for what's currently out there. All of those branches get the fixes as they're moved in, but some of those branches are also future development branches. So as the fix is allowed to be made public, it will be rolled into those branches. You may be on a newer version for stream that does not have something that has been patched internally because that code hasn't been released publicly yet. It will be caught up in stream once that code is made publicly available because why would we leave CVEs hanging out there once we can talk about them? We, we have no intention to expose people to vulnerabilities, but the primary driver for stream is feature development. This, this very much drives back to the idea that we don't harm communities through the omission or deliberate destruction of code. Like, that's just not a thing. To me, it sounds like in practice there isn't any significant change in terms of CVEs between how things are now with CentOS Linux and how things would be with CentOS Stream. Correct. Correct. Okay. Can you repeat that to the recording? For, for the recording, there is no material difference between how CVEs are handled in CentOS Linux and how CVEs will be handled in CentOS Stream. Once the code is publicly available, it becomes part of the stream and the process moves on. No other questions. You guys are a lot more accepting. Maybe they were all on the Wednesday meeting. The person responsible for the build system is not allowed to ask questions. We didn't read question. Mike, your question. Um, I wonder what we think about the process for the uh, bits of the stream that rel abandons, because it opts not to ship. Uh, what do we expect? How do we expect our users to handle them? Everything in stream is what Red Hat intends to continue in the next minor release. Having said that, if you are familiar with the RHEL structure and how Red Hat releases media, they don't ever really remove packages. They kind of continue on. And I would expect, because stream is supposed to be a reflection of what comes next, that that code is still there in the same way that it is still available in RHEL. Does that match your understanding? You, you, you yeah, were, so I mean, you need right, a mic. Sir. If you're speaking, you must have the mic. I must have the mic. That, that's what you can count on. Um, there are exceptions. I mean, I went through one recently where something wasn't, was, was landed in the Compose and would have gone into stream, but then got backed out because it wasn't ready. QA said, nope, we'll punt this to the next release. So there's exceptions like that, but in general also within the, the RHEL engineering process, we're trying to make it so that we only land stuff in our nightlies, which becomes stream, when it's ready. And so over time we're getting better and better at that. And so as stream ramps up, I hope these exceptions become less and less. And that's, that's our intent. To go back to the slide that Bex showed earlier, this is what Red Hat intends, and we know that there will be the exception, but that should be the exception rather than the rule. There was a question in this corner. Uh, you and then we'll go back to it. Cool. Uh, just for those that don't really understand how the Fedora, you, you mentioned about um, life cycle and audience and not differentiating quality. So we, one of the slides is said, oh, Fedora is now close or released. So what is really, when a Fedora 30, 30 something happens, when does it trickle down into streams, or they are completely independent streams? That would be a periodic branch. Um, hypothetically, in the future, around Fedora 30 Mumble, you should see an additional code base appear somewhere, and we're not certain where that's going to be yet, because we haven't done this process before. 
and it will start to stabilize, and you'll start to see that materialize more and more. And at some point, probably before REL 9 GAs, you will see that as CentOS Stream 9 mumble, and I won't be able to say 9 in front of the business folks, but that's basically what it will be. And you'll have time then to start saying, okay, this is what's going to be in REL 9. Let's, let's get to work. Um, so there won't be any surprises in the community for where the hell did user bin Python in RHEL 8 go, or in CentOS 8. You'll understand that because you've had you know six months, nine months, a year, whatever time frame to see that, to watch the development process happen. And during that time, if we do something that you think is a dumb idea, you have the ability to give us feedback, and we can listen to that, we can incorporate that, we can course correct and say, okay, hang on, we touched that pot on the stove, and we found out it was hot, maybe we shouldn't do that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Well, just to follow up on my question, uh, speaking for six, basically, if we have something that is removed for stream, we may need to have the same mass rebuild mechanism that Fedora has to rebuild something on top of, uh, that are already been built by SIG. So this is something to take in consideration. I think it's quite important to consider that as... Because if, imagine you remove something from stream, then you need to rebuild some package from the SIG because it doesn't work anymore. Because yes. it's a dependency. So we need to think about the process for SIG uh, if it can happen. That, that is absolutely the case, and uh, the question was around dependencies and builds for SIGs that are using Stream as their base, because if one of these edge case packages is used as a dependency and is removed, that SIG would have to rebuild <coughs> to remove that dependency or adjust, and yes, that is absolutely correct. We are going to try to do that as little as possible but that is a potential possibility. That is probably not the only type of corner case we're going to run into. Again, we're, we're aiming for like that kind of 80%. We're still doing the big hand wavy gestures for a lot of this. I expect that we'll hit you know, 80% developer completion on this and then we'll look at the next 80% and we'll keep taking those chunks down. And I am told we are out of time. And we've got one person who's trying to sneak in at the end, and I'll allow it, and Rich can yell at me. Briefly. Uh, you already know how the infrastructure projects, like RDO or OB, are going to deal with the streams? Initially, the ex uh, how are the layered projects, uh, the SIGs, going to deal with stream? And initially, the exact same way they are right now. That should be available soon. <coughs> in the CBS repository for them, or in the CBS build system for them to start cycling builds through that way. There's a lot of work to do there. We still have some module stuff to figure out. There's a lot of tweaking. Uh, Tomas and the rest of the team have to basically sit down and hash out some ideas. We need to add some develop packages. There, there's, there's work to do there still. But the idea is minimal change, minimal footprint, maximum value. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome.